In the six months since we last looked at the Eclipse emulator on iOS devices like iPhone and iPad, it's matured in two very special ways. It now supports sound output through iOS and it supports wireless controllers. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Eclipse emulator on your own iOS device and start playing your favorite retro games. And it all starts right now. Hi, Blaine Locklear here. To level up your video game hardware and software through restorations, repairs, mods, product reviews, and other video game content, do that by subscribing. All right, let's get Eclipse Simulator set up on your iOS device. And make sure you stay to the end for bonus content to help make this process go smoother and easier every time you use it moving forward. The Eclipse Simulator supports NES, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Sega Master System, and Game Gear emulation. And it's all done through a web browser, no jailbreaks, no modding, and non-revocable. Before you start using the Eclipse emulator, I think it's a good idea to understand where your game ROMs go on your device or in the cloud. In this case, I'm using an iPad, and I'm going to show you that if you download a file from the web, if you're using iCloud service, it will actually download that file directly into iCloud for you, which is really cool. You can transfer your files from iCloud over to your device, but the Eclipse emulator can read them right out of the cloud, which is really cool. And it can also use Google Drive if you're a Google Drive user. When you find a ROM that you want, you can tap on it and you'll get the download dialog window. From here, if you tap on download and you're an iCloud user, it will download it directly into the downloads folder on iCloud if you have iCloud configured. This is cool because it saves space on your device for other things like pictures, videos, and other games that you want to play. Quick note here that whatever ROMs you do download and install to your device or to iCloud need to be uncompressed. The Eclipse Simulator cannot read compressed files like zip files for ROM formats. Let's take a moment to look at what to do if you do, in fact, download a compressed file and you need to uncompress it to use it with the Eclipse Simulator. You can go into the Files application and go to wherever you downloaded the zip file or other compressed file. Tap and hold on it, and if you look all the way at the bottom, you'll see Uncompress. Just tap that and it will uncompress your ROM file so that you can use it. And of course, you can always transfer your own ROM files to your device using your PC or Mac connection by USB. If you want to use a wireless controller, and I recommend it because it definitely adds a lot of value to the game experience, you should go ahead and connect it by Bluetooth first before you launch the emulator. Go into the Settings application and go into Bluetooth. Make sure your game controller is paired here before proceeding. In this case, I'm using the Nimbus controller, which is absolutely fantastic. It's iOS ready right out of the box and has worked very well with virtually no lag with the Eclipse emulator. If you want to pick one up, I've got it linked for you in the description below. Go back to your home screen and launch your internet browser. In this instance, I'm using Safari. It's worked very well so far. I have the site linked for you in the description below. To start the Eclipse emulator, tap on the red Get button in the middle of the screen. When the pop-up opens, tap on the message that says Above Link Not Working? Question mark. Then tap on Play Online Mirror. When you run Eclipse for the first time, you'll be given the opportunity to set up Eclipse. I would definitely recommend this because there are some great options here that will help you customize the experience. Tap on Set Up Eclipse and you'll be given the option to either play the games in their native aspect ratio, which I recommend, or you can also stretch them out to full screen. Once you've made your selection, tap on Continue. You'll get the option to change the skin and color of the interface for Eclipse. Primarily, this is based around using the virtual controls if you hold it in portrait mode. You can pick any of the colors you like and then tap on Continue. You'll be taken to the license agreement for Eclipse. I think the thing that's most noteworthy in the license agreement is that they do not collect any personally identifying information from you. That's fantastic. Tap on Agree and Continue, and the Eclipse setup is complete. You'll get some information to teach you how to put ROMs in the right locations and how to access them so that Eclipse can put them to use. Tap on Close Setup, and you'll be at the Eclipse main interface. If you're using a wireless controller, make sure you touch the D-pad or press one of the buttons to let it connect into the emulator. Then tap on the select icon in the top left corner to verify that the emulator has picked up your wireless controller. 
If everything went to plan, you should see the controller name listed directly under the keyboard listing. If you tap on the controller name, you'll get the button assignment options here. If you're not pleased with the button assignments the way they're set up on your controller, this gives you the flexibility to change them in the way that best suits your needs. When you're done, tap the back button and then tap it again to go back to the main interface. From here, you'll need to upload a game to the emulator. In the right corner, you'll see a plus button. Tap on that plus button for your upload options. For this instance, I'm using iCloud Drive, so tap on Upload, and then tap on Browse. From here, you'll see all of the things that are available to you in your iCloud Drive, or on your device. To access the ROMs on iCloud Drive, tap on iCloud Drive on the left navigation, and then Downloads. Especially if you downloaded them directly through your web browser, you'll find your ROMs in that Downloads folder. Here are a sample of ROMs that I've already downloaded and made ready for use. They're already uncompressed and ready to go. Let's load up Metroid and see how it plays. Make note that to start sound in the emulator, you need to tap on screen once as indicated in the message in the bottom left corner. I have the sound turned off on the games in the video because most of these games have copyrighted audio from Nintendo. Just know that the sound is there and in most cases in the emulation, the sound is really good. All right, let's test out Metroid and see how it goes. What I found is even with playing with the Bluetooth controller and playing this online, both of which are gonna introduce a little bit of lag into it, I didn't find it to be a laggy experience at all. I thought it played fantastic in spite of my own deficiencies in playing Metroid itself. Hey, I never said I was great at it. I found the easiest way to reset the system and go back and start a new game is just to refresh the page. All right, let's try something different here. Tap on the plus button to get back into the upload options, and then we'll browse and go into iCloud Drive again and take a look at a different game. This time, let's take a look at one of my wife's favorite games of all time, which is going to be Amazing Penguin on the original Nintendo Game Boy. So I've got the ROM right here, tap it and load it up. And just as a reminder, each time you load a new game, if you want to hear sound, you need to tap the screen to activate sound coming through the browser. And once again, the emulator shines. It did a fantastic job playing this original Game Boy game, even with the lag over the internet and the lag that is invariably introduced by using a Bluetooth controller, the gameplay is just tight. It was so much fun to go back and revisit this game. It's amazing to me to think that some of these online game platforms that have tried to do these kind of things and charge money by the month for it have done a terrible job where these folks have done this absolutely for free in service to the users and it turned out wonderful. And they don't even host the games. You have to upload them directly from your own source. Incredible. Press the refresh button and go back and let's check out one more game. Let's check out something a little higher spec this time. Let's go the Game Boy Advance route. Tap on plus, tap on upload, and tap on browse. It's gonna default back to the last folder I used, and right in there is going to be Super Mario Advance 2. Tap it to load the game. And right off the rip, you can see that the game's playing fantastic. It has nice, vibrant colors, smooth frame rate, and although I have it turned off, the audio actually does sound excellent through this emulator. Let's go with Super Mario Bros. 2. A couple of quick turns of the carousel to get to Toad, a couple of quick level load screens to get to level one. And we're underway. It plays smooth, it has a great frame rate. It looks just like the classic Game Boy Advance game loved by gamers around the world. And here's that bonus tip I promised you. Why not put an icon right on your home screen to take you directly into the emulator without having to do all the setup each time? Tap on the forward icon in the top right of the browser and then scroll all the way down until you see the menu option for add to home screen. Tap on it to select it and then tap on add in the top right corner and it will automatically add the icon for Eclipse right onto your home screen. Now when you tap on the Eclipse icon, you'll see the splash screen come up and it will go right into the main interface for the emulator, saving you time and getting you into your gameplay even faster. Make sure you subscribe to the channel while you're here so you don't miss out on great original video game content as it's posted. And check out this video here, shown on screen and linked in the pinned comment and description below. Thanks so much, I always enjoy our time together here on YouTube and I can't wait to see you in the next video.